uh, pigeon hole just Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Make a presentation of, of the petition. Um, the stakeholders of the cockpit country, which all of us in Jamaica are actually stakeholders, whatever the state that terminology actually means, but all of us have interests. Um, believe it or not, um, there has to be a core for all things in that, and um, with the awareness of what is happening in the cockpit country. A lot of us now are becoming conscious of the fact that the cockpit country could be the core basin um, here in Jamaica, actually providing life for the entire um, populace. And so we are actively now um, in negotiation with our government to restore to the people, um, I'm going to say life, because without the simple things that the Moser has given to us to sustain life, we won't have life. Um, Sister Sharon is in Kingston. Are you able to speak now, Sister Sharon? Yes. Okay, I'm taking you live. I'm in a taxi right now. And uh, there will be a few minutes that I have, but 10, 10 minutes or so. Oh, okay. All right, so we're breaking into Sister Sharon's um, busy schedule, but we just want you to tell us a little bit about what um, is happening in with the in Kingston, as far as the cockpit countries is um, involved? So we have concerned citizens and we have a coalition of uh, members belonging to different groups and organizations. We have uh -huh. NGOs, we have civic organizations, we have politicians coming together, people from the hillsides, the highways and the byways of Jamaica, to let their voices be heard and to get information about the cockpit country, the resistance, and the cry for no mining in the cockpit country. And that's the entire cockpit country, which includes and goes outside of the boundaries that the Prime Minister has established. We're going back to the cockpit country stakeholders group um, boundary, and it was made in 2009 as here by Professor Dale Weber. The official out of boundary was established then. And so they're calling on the Prime Minister of Jamaica to do this on behalf of the residents of the areas excluded from the designated protected area <laughs> announced in 2017. And on behalf of the people who value the irreplaceable wildlife, the scenic landscape, history, cultural heritage, echo system services, traditional livelihood, such as farming, and the expanding ecotourism opportunities in the areas that the areas provide. So they, we are calling on the Prime Minister to declare all the area within the CCSG, which is a cockpit country stakeholders um, boundary, be closed to mining, quarrying, and prospecting, and to declare the entire area protected national area. And they're asking the government of Jamaica to immediately withdraw all mining leases and permits for mining, quarrying, and prospecting in the lands within the CCSG boundary. Uh, further, they seek protection for the cockpit country in its entirety, because all of the areas that were included within the boundary, CCSG boundary, were designated as integral parts of the cockpit country. The water culture, history, the economy, and, and its valuable livelihoods. When, and when, we, when we talk about the cockpit culture, how many parishes are we talking about? Four. So we're talking four about parishes. four parishes that will be directly affected um, from the mining that, that is expected to take place there. Um, and water sources that are serving the uh, Monchica River Gardens, um, that's serving uh, another another area that I'm talking about, 
and even down here as wide as fall right. um, may be affected many, many areas and water supplies in certain areas will be affected. It's a 66% of the fresh water supply are hidden in the Kalka Tent. Okay. All right. So the water will be directly affected. People's lives um, in four parishes of the four, of the 14 or 13 parishes that we still have left. Um, yes, and there are some excluded communities that I'd like to mention here because this is the part of the petition that went to the Prime Minister today. Mm -hmm. uh, excluded from the 2017 boundary, mm -hmm. Northeast Stewart Town, Jackson Town, Alps, Sawyers, Belmont, mm -hmm. Rich Richmond de Penn, Mahogany Hill, mm -hmm. Barn Stable, Madras, mm -hmm. Bryan Castle, Gibraltar, and Endeavour to the South Appleton. And that will affect mm -hmm. the business of the Appleton uh, Church, Balakaba, Magati, Burton White Hall, Ipswich, Ginger Hill, Jointwood, Mulgrave, Dry River, and Retirement in the north and northwest, Cambridge, Plum Park, Catadupa, Kensington, Bandon, and Bunkers Hill. So these communities should not have to lose anything, not their homes, not their health not their farmlands, not the forests or traditional livelihoods to suffer the adverse effects of bauxite mining. And what we see is that bauxite mining, when it enters communities, they, community, the residents are not told. They are frightened into this and cowered into, you know, losing their homes. And they are not provided with um, proper resettlement or proper compensation. These are issues that we've personally heard from people who were there on the march today. Uh, what, what I have heard, I've heard a story once, um, because many of our viewers that, or, um, or listeners may not know that um, we have already lost lots of Jamaica to um, bauxite mining. Um, yeah. par parts of Clarendon, St. Anne, um, St. Elizabeth, um, St. Catherine. We have lost parts of those because of the mining. Um, that has taken place in those areas. So, Did you say Clarendon? Yeah. Because I went to Moko mm -hmm. uh, at least five to six years ago mm -hmm. to witness a football stadium that was dug out and left. Mm -hmm. You know, and for people to continue their lives, they had to do subsistence farming, which was not enough to carry on their livelihood. Mm -hmm. The climate was affected and the people were hurting then. So imagine now. And I can tell you as a healer, um, I've had to administer um, healing to many of the persons who have had um, cancers or respiratory ailments um, from many of these bauxite areas. And so um, truly um, it's a serious situation that is happening in Jamaica, um, something that, that needs um, immediate res resolution, because especially because I'm living directly in the cockpit <laughs> um, country. So, well, all of, I'm going to be seriously affected in a little while. I won't have any food, any um, herbs to heal, nothing at all, once they've started mining in the cockpit um, country. And so, it's so you will be joining with the coalition then and, and concerned citizens who are going to continue to bring their case to our uh, government because we have to speak to the sectors that represent tourism, agriculture, mining, and um, other sectors. And the health sector, the health, health, health sector, health sector most most definitely. definitely. Yes, right. Yes. So we have to continue our advocacy openly. We have to have forums and we have to have action. Solutions have to be brought forward okay. and um, tabled, and we have to just continue to push. It's, it's the people action that's that force now. People came out, they spoke out, uh, the rallying cry. It's a beautiful rallying cry. Um, half the country is for family. Um, is, is it true that they have already started mining in the cockpit country? Um, mining has been taking place, we're told. Yeah. It, it has been. This, this, this is a new mining um, agreement that uh, we were protesting. Um, but, but there has been, um, they have already started mining. Um, well, what we're protesting is the, the Naranda 173, um, what, do you, what do you call it, mining permit. Mm -hmm. That one is due to begin on the 17th. Mm -hmm. well, but Ronnie Twait, this morning Ronnie Twait said that it cannot go forward, and he knows it cannot go forward. 
until the environmental impact assessment is brought publicly for people to respond to. That hasn't been done. And he, he believes they are fearful of what's inside of <laughs> what it contains. So it has a control been brought forward to the people. So we, we must continue our advocacy as they cannot go forward with the people's outcry. We must continue. Um, so it seems as though there's still a, uh, there's still a lot of talk and negotiation. And chief of all, as a praying nation of people, we must be on our knees praying because this doesn't seem like it's just a physical fight. Um, it seems as if it is spiritual. Um, it seems as if the devil is so It's a spiritual as... revel revelation, and our ancestors were with us. We were at her Hebrew circle. Nani is there. Yes. In Irma. It wasn't her bunk grave, but, she, you know, that's our representative place for Nani of the Maroons, the indigenous chieftainess. It was never defeated. So her spirit was there with us. We called on it. We used the conch shell. We used the drums. We used our voices. We gave libations and prayers were offered. So we believe firmly in our spirit that this, the ancestors are with us and the Most High is with us. I have reached my destination and I have to sign off now. <laughs> All right, we want to thank you so much, Sharon, for taking the time and bringing us up to date as to what is happening. In I certainly the continue to keep you up to date with some pictures and some voice thank audios you so much, as well. Thank Peace you. and love. Peace and love, right dear to pray and, and beseech the Most High, and Most High, all the yes. elements and the powers that He has assigned to our victory. We call upon them now to um, come yes, to our Yes, give thanks and praise.